take a little time and really begin to focus on God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 As we sing, just let your mind begin to center on God. Let your mind begin to focus on the goodness of the Lord. Begin to realize how good God has been. Begin to realize that God has brought you through some things. And that it is only by his hand that we are here. He's worthy of our praise. He's worthy of our glory. He's worthy of all that we can give him. Lord, we praise you. Lord, we praise you. Lord, we praise you. Can we thank him? Lord, we thank you. Even if you're on Zoom, give him thanks, give him glory. We thank you, Lord, we thank you, Lord, we thank you. And the reason that we're doing all of this is because he's worthy. Lord, you're worthy, Lord, you're worthy. do it because we love him Lord we love you Lord we love you Lord we love you Lord we love you hallelujah is the highest praise Hallelujah. 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 We serve a God that is worthy. We serve a God that is worthy. We serve a God that is worthy of all praise, all glory, and all honor. He's a mighty God. He's an excellent God. He's a, a way making God. He's a blessing God. He's a prayer answering God. He is worthy of all praise, all glory, and all God, because he is God all by himself. He doesn't need another to help him. He doesn't need another to do any of the things that he does. He's capable of doing it in his own power because he is the all-powerful one. He is the mighty God, the everlasting Father. He is the one. He is our Lord, our Savior, our great God. And he is worthy all by himself. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory for the great things that he has done. Giving honor to our God and our Father. Giving honor to his son, Jesus Christ. Giving honor to all who are in the house of God this morning. To all who are online with us. We thank God for each of you. We bless God for each of you. And we celebrate God today because he's worthy of being celebrated. Amen, amen, and amen. I want you to turn your attention to the book of Mark chapter 10 once again. And I want to lift up 
verses 47 through 52. Mark chapter 10, verses 47 through 52. And it reads, When Bartimaeus heard that Jesus of Nazareth was nearby, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Be quiet, many of the people yelled at him. But he only shouted louder, Son of David, have mercy on me. When Jesus heard him, he stopped and said, Tell him to come here. So they called the blind man. Cheer up. They said, come on, he's calling you. Bartimaeus threw aside his coat, jumped up, and came to Jesus. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked. My rabbi, the blind man said, I want to see. And Jesus said to him, go, your faith has healed you. Instantly the man could see, and he followed Jesus down the road. Amen. I want to share this morning from the subject of in his presence. In his presence. Let us pray. Gracious Father, we thank you for this day and this hour. We thank you, God, for the privilege of life this morning. And God, since you've given us life, help us to use it to glorify you. Help us to lift up our voices in praise unto you, O God. And God, we ask that you would have your way in this service. Let your will be done. Let your glory be manifested. And I ask God that you would open our ears and help us to listen. I ask God that you would open our eyes for we want to see Jesus. Then open our hearts that we might receive him. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the blessed Holy Ghost, Amen. In his presence. Have you ever considered the things that people do to get in the presence of famous people or celebrities? People will pay exorbitant amounts of money to get into the presence of a celebrity or someone whom they consider famous. People pay millions and sometimes uh, even multi-millions of dollars to have an audience with the president. Many people will pay high prices for tickets to go to see a concert just so they could be in the atmosphere. People will do all sorts of things just to be in someone's presence. Some people will tell lies to be in somebody's presence. Somebody will do some strange things to be in somebody's presence. And while these people will do anything almost to be in the presence of mere humans, what are we willing to do to be in the presence of God? I would like to submit to us this morning that Bartimaeus cried out not for necessarily what he needed, but he was crying out for the audience of God. He was crying out to be in the presence of God. Bartimaeus wanted to get into the presence of Jesus. His cry was not simply to get what he needed, but he wanted to get into the presence of Jesus. He heard that Jesus was passing by and he realized that if I can get into his presence. Are we out to do the same thing? Do we have the mind to do the same thing? To get into the presence of God. To have an audience with God. We know that all we need is to get into the presence of the Lord. Are we in that mindset? Are we of that frame of mind? To know that we need to get into the presence of the Lord. We can gain access to the presence of God by crying out and pressing through challenges while casting off the things that hinder us, allowing God to minister to our needs. I have four things that I want to share with us this morning. The first thing that I want us to see is that we must cry out. 
Verse 47 says, when Bartimaeus heard that Jesus of Nazareth was nearby, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. In the moment, Bartimaeus understood his cry was the key to opening a door of access. Many of us don't understand is the cry that we can give on behalf of our needs in our life. The cry that we can give to God is the key to opening the door of access. Some people are unwilling to cry out and because they're unwilling to cry out, they don't use the key that could get them access to their needs being met. Bartimaeus understood that if I cry out, I can get an audience with Jesus. If I cry out in the midst of this crowd, I can get Jesus' attention. If I cry out in the midst of this crowd, it is the key to me getting access to Jesus. How many of us are willing to cry out? To get access to Jesus. How many of us are willing to shout to get access to Jesus? How many of us are willing to lift up our voices to get access to Jesus? It doesn't matter if we're in the congregation with other saints. Or it doesn't matter if we're at home or in our car. Are we willing to lift up our voice to get access to Jesus? Because crying out is the key to access. His cry was inclusive of the name of Jesus. He didn't just cry out to any source. And I think that's some of our problems. Sometimes we're crying out, but we're not selective of who we're crying out to. We're crying out to people when we should be crying out to Jesus. Bartimaeus was selective when he cried out. He cried out, says, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. If you're crying out to the wrong one, you won't have access if you're crying out in the wrong name, you won't have access. There is but one name under heaven by which, which we must be saved, and that is the name of Jesus. If you cry out any other name, salvation is not coming your way. You have to cry out in the name of Jesus only. If you cry out, Jesus, save me, you shall be saved. When Peter was on that water, he didn't cry out to just anyone. He said, Lord, save me. He understood that the name he called on was the name that would grant him what he needed. He understood that when he called out and he cried out, it was the key, the access to him being saved on the water that day. So Peter cried out, Lord, save me. He understood he was crying out to the right one. He understood he was crying out to the one that had the power. But when we cry out, make sure that we're crying out to the right one because it is the key to our access. And if you have that key and you are crying out to the wrong one, access will be denied. But Bartimaeus also cried out. He said, Lord, have mercy on me. Bartimaeus gave a cry of mercy. He was underserving, but he was in need. Hallelujah. All of us can testify to that. We're undeserving, but we're in need. We're undeserving, but we have needs in our lives. We're undeserving, but Lord, have mercy on me. I don't know about you, but I've been in a place where I've had to cry out, Lord, have mercy on me. Because I knew my need was great. I knew my need was beyond my means of being able to meet it. But I knew that there was one who could. But I also knew that I was undeserving of having God do anything for me. So when I cry out, just like Barnabas, I'm crying out to Jesus, the one who is the key to my access. And I'm crying out in mercy. Lord, have mercy on me. I know I'm undeserving, but God, I need you. God, I know I haven't done right, but Lord, I need you. Lord, I know I failed you time and time again, but Lord, I need you. Lord, have mercy on me. When we cry out in mercy, we're acknowledging before God that we're undeserving and that we don't deserve anything from the hand of God. But we're also decrying out because we understood that if I call upon the name of Jesus, hallelujah, if I call upon the one who gave me this life, if I call upon the one who gave me grace, if I call upon the one who saved me, he can come and do something about my situation. The Bible says that we have an intercessor that sits at the right hand of the father. His name is Jesus Christ. 
And because he's an intercessor sitting at the right hand of God. In my cry of mercy, I cry to the one who can take my case before the Lord. I cry to the one named Jesus who can argue my case before God. Yes, Father, he is unworthy, but I believe you need to bless him anyhow because he's under your grace. Hallelujah. I don't think we understand what it means when we enter into salvation. That's why the world doesn't know what they're missing out on. When we're saved, we enter into a, a relationship, a covenant with the Father. And when we enter into a covenant with the Father, it obligates God to move on our behalf. Oh, hallelujah. But when you call upon him and you cry out, you got to use the name that is accessible to the Father. And that name is Jesus. He is the key to the door that's locked. He is the key to the door. You can open it by his name. And if you open it by his name, you're opening access to the Father. You're opening access to your blessing. You're opening access to getting your needs met because you're crying out to the one who can open the door for you. Crying out to the one who can grant mercy before you because you're crying out to Jesus Christ. Amen. But not only did Bartimaeus cry out, Bartimaeus Kept pressing. When I look at verse 48, it says, be quiet. Many of the people yelled at him, but only he only shouted louder. Son of David, have mercy on me. When Jesus heard him, he stopped and said, tell him to come here. So they called the blind man. Cheer up. They said, come on. He's calling you. What do you do? When you're seeking the presence of God, but challenges come. You want to access the presence of God, but there are challenges in your way. You want to access the presence of God, but there, there are people in your way. Bartimaeus is trying to access the presence of God, but people are yelling at him to be quiet. People are yelling at him to close his mouth. People are yelling at him to hush up. It's a dangerous thing to tell somebody to be quiet in worship. Hallelujah. Amen, lights. When somebody's crying out in worship, when, when somebody's yelling out in worship, when somebody's lifting up their voice in worship, it's a dangerous thing to tell them to be quiet. Because when we understand that they, the cry that they're giving, it may be a desperate cry. That the cry that they're giving, there may be a need in their life that is so desperate that they're crying out in that moment to get access to the presence of God. And if we're stopping them, we're trying to stop their access to the presence of God. But I'm so glad that Bartimaeus didn't allow the people to stop him. Every time we seek God's presence, it won't come easy. Yes, sometimes when you're trying to get into the presence of God, it may not come easy. But Bartimaeus understood that I've got a need in my life and I'm going to keep pressing until I get into the presence of God. And Bartimaeus kept on pressing. Bartimaeus wouldn't give up, but he said he cried even the louder. Son of David, have mercy on me. Are you willing to intensify your cry? When people tell you to shut up, are you willing to intensify your cry when people try to stop you? Are you willing to intensify your cry when challenges come? Are you willing to intensify your cry? Yeah. Bartimaeus was willing to intensify his cry. But instead of helping the man experience Jesus the way that they were, they began to challenge his access. Instead of them helping Bartimaeus to get what he was asking for, instead of helping Bartimaeus to experience what they were experiencing, they told him to be quiet. They were trying to hinder Bartimaeus' access to the presence of Jesus. They were challenging his access to Jesus. We've got to be careful that we are not challenging somebody's access to Jesus. The next time somebody on your road begins to shout, the next time somebody on your road begins to cry and lift up their voice, maybe you ought to lift up your voice with them. Maybe you ought to cry with them. Maybe you ought to shout with them. Maybe you ought to get in line with what they're doing because they may have a desperate need in their life and you're helping them to gain access to Jesus. When you see somebody pressing and they're pressing their way and they seem to be pressing hard on a Sunday morning, Join them in the press. 
Join them in keep on pressing with them. Join them in the press to God. Join them in the press to get into the presence of the Lord. If you notice, the crowd eventually got on board. When you look at the end of it, say they told the man, cheer up. Come on, he's calling you. Before they were hindering Bartimaeus from getting into the presence of Jesus. But now we see the crowd telling Bartimaeus, cheer up, he's calling you. Hallelujah. That's a word right there for somebody. Cheer up, he's calling you. Cheer up, he's giving you access. Cheer up, your prayers are about to be granted. Cheer up, the Lord is about to open the door for you. Cheer up, access is now not denied but granted. Cheer up, because you now have access to the presence of the Lord. Cheer up, because God has made a way for you into his presence. Bartimaeus was no longer hindered, but they were telling him to cheer up and come. We've got to learn to help usher them into the presence of Jesus. We help them by shouting with them sometimes. We help them by not hindering them. We help them by understanding that they may have a desperate need. That's why we hear the desperate cry. We got to keep pressing. The next thing that I see that the text tells us in verse 50, we've got to cast off. It says Bartimaeus threw aside his coat, jumped up and came to Jesus. There are some things that we need to cast off. Bartimaeus understood at that moment that access was being made available. When they said, come, he's calling you. And he understood that the thing that was hindering the most at that time was his coat. It doesn't tell us why the coat was hindering, but it says he threw the coat off to go to Jesus. Maybe the coat was wrapped around his legs. Maybe the coat was tripping him up. Maybe the coat was in the way. Maybe he was using his coat as a blanket at the time. Whatever the case may be, he was willing to cast it off so that he could gain access to Jesus. What are we willing to cast off to gain access to Jesus? What are we willing to cast off to get into the presence of the Lord? There may be some things and some people that are keeping us out of the presence of God. There may be some things and some people that are hindering our presence, uh, going into the presence of the Lord. There may be some habits that we have that are hindering us from going into the presence of the Lord. Are we willing to cast those things off? What are we willing to cast off? Would you cast them off so that you can move into or closer to Christ? I would dare say that there should be nothing that we're not willing to cast off in order to get into the presence of the Lord. He was willing to disengage himself from anything that would hinder him from coming to Christ. We've got to be just like Bartimaeus. We've got to disengage ourselves from anything that would prohibit us from coming to Christ. The Bible tells us to lay aside every sin and every weight that so easily besets us. We've got to lay aside every sin and every weight that so easily besets us. There are some things that are sins and we know that they're sins, but yet we're holding on to them. And they're keeping us from accessing the presence of God like we need to. There are some things that are sins and we're holding on to them and they keep us from coming to Christ like we ought to. There are some things that are weights. They're not sins, but they're weighing us down. They're not sins, but they're they're holding us back. We've got to be willing to cast those off so that we can go to the Father, that we can come to the Son like we're supposed to. Don't you know that we've got to be tired of missing out on access to Jesus? Aren't you tired of missing out on the presence of the Lord? Aren't we tired of missing out on being able to get into the presence of God? Aren't we tired of missing out on having God operate in our life the way that he wants to, only because we're unwilling to cast off some things from our life are we willing to cast off no matter what that thing may be cast it off so that we can enjoy the presence of the Lord if we cast away those things that are weighing us down if we cast away those things that are sinful if we cast them away it may allow us to get closer to God it allows us to get into the presence of the Lord and the last thing that I want us to see out of our text we make are your petition in verses 51 and 52 it says what do you want me to do for you Jesus asked my rabbi the blind man said I want to see and Jesus said to him go for your faith has healed you instantly the man could see and he followed 
the road. He followed Jesus down the road. Once he got his blessing, once he got what he needed from Jesus, he followed him down the road. In his presence, our needs can be addressed. Some of us have needs in our life and we've just been dealing with them. Some of our needs have been unaddressed. And I believe the reason that some of our needs have been unaddressed is because we have not been accessing the presence of God. We've not been trying to get into the presence of the Lord. Maybe there's some sins and some weights that are keeping us from going into the presence of God. Maybe there's some things that we know that we can't do and yet we we'll keep doing them, but it hinders us and keeps us from going into the presence of God. But I've got to understand in his presence, my needs can be addressed. In his presence, I can have my issues dealt with. In his presence, I can find my needs no longer being needs, but they can be fulfilled. In his presence, in the presence of the Lord, there's fullness of joy. In his right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. But you got to start by getting into the presence of the Lord. And if I don't take the time to get into the presence of the Lord, is it possible that I'm saying that I'm willing to stay in my situation? Is it possible to say that I'm willing to stay with these needs in my life because I'm not willing to go into the presence of the Lord? Bartimaeus had many needs, but he knew the most pressing need that he had. Bartimaeus was a beggar that sat by the road. He, he didn't have a job, but he, he sat by the road and he depended upon people to bring him stuff. He sat by the road and he depended on people to bless him. He sat by the road. But Bartimaeus understood that I've got more pressing needs. I've got needs that, that is in my life and that need is for me to see. When Jesus asked him, what can I do for you? Bartimaeus said, I want to see there were a whole lot of things that he could have asked for, but he said, I want to see. Bartimaeus could have asked for money, but he knows that money wasn't going to do him any good. He, he could have asked for, for materialistic things, but he understood that that wasn't his most pressing need. Bartimaeus understood that I'm now in the presence of Jesus. My cry got me access. My cry opened the door. I kept pressing until I got there, and I cast off the thing that was hindering me. And now I'm standing in the presence of Jesus. And as I'm in the presence of Jesus, he understood I've got one thing that I really need. And I need to see. I got one thing that I really need and I need my eyes open. Don't let that go by somebody. There's somebody here today. You may have physical sight, but you still need to see. There, you may have physical sight, but you still need to have your eyes open. Is that one thing that we need and that is to have our eyes open. And Bartimaeus said, I've got one need and I know exactly what that need is. And I'm not afraid to ask for it. I'm not ashamed to ask for it. I need to see. I need to have my eyes open. And as he asked for it, Jesus granted him what he needed. All because he got into the presence of the Lord. But Bartimaeus also understood in the presence, our faith accesses God's power. It took his faith to say, I need to see. Maybe it's because Bartimaeus has heard about what Jesus has done. Maybe it's because Bartimaeus heard that Jesus had opened blinded eyes. Maybe he's heard that Jesus has raised the dead. Maybe he's heard that Jesus has healed the lame. Whatever the case may be, it took faith for him to access the power of Jesus. And in the presence of God, he accessed the power of Jesus. In the presence of Jesus, he accessed that power because his faith got him there. The faith caused him to cry out. The faith caused him to keep pressing. The faith caused him to cast off. And the faith got him to make his petition before the Lord. And his faith got him his healing. How do you know that, Jones? Because Jesus said, your faith has healed you. Your faith has made you whole. Your faith has gotten you access. Your faith has granted you the thing that you wanted the most. Your faith has shown up and blessed you. Your faith has gotten you access to me. And I took your faith to the Father. And your Father has granted you sight. And it said the man received his sight. And he went and followed Jesus down the road. My question for you is, once we get what we want from God, 
Are we going to keep on following him? Once we get what we've been needing the most from God, are we going to keep on serving him? Once we get what we needed from the Lord, we would turn our backs on him. Bartimaeus showed us once you get what you wanted from the father, you keep following him. Once you get what you wanted from the father, you follow him even closer. Once you get what you wanted from the father, you keep accessing faith. Once you get what you wanted from the father, you keep crying out. Once you get what you want from the father, you keep pressing. Once you get what you want from the father, you keep casting off. Once you get what you want from the father, then you keep on asking because the door has been opened. Access has been granted. And now you're in the presence of the Lord. But we got to understand in his presence is where we need to be. In his presence is where we can get our issues dealt with. In his presence is where God can bless us. In his presence is where God can deal with us. But you got to start by getting into his presence. Amen. 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 Maybe there's someone who has not accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Today is your day to cry out. Today is your day to get access to the Father. Today is your day to get access to the kingdom of God. Maybe you're hearing this message and you, you realize that you've not been accessing the presence of the Lord. But today you want to. Today you want to ask God to come into your life. Well, it's as simple as that. Asking God to come into your life. Forgive you of your sins. And accepting Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. So if there's one today who would like to receive Christ, I ask you to pray this prayer with me. Father, I come into your presence now and I, first of all, I want to say thank you. Thank you for allowing me access. Thank you, oh God, that you heard my cry. And God, I want to thank you that you are willing to save a sinner like me. I want to thank you, Father, that you're willing to open your kingdom to me. And Father, I ask that you would forgive me. I ask God that you would help me to cast off those things that are hindering me. Help me to cast off those things that are causing me to stumble. Help me to cast off the sins and the weights. And Father, I need your glory. I need your grace. So I ask that you would save me. Save me by your power. Save me by the blood of your son, Jesus Christ. Father, I thank you. I thank you for salvation. I thank you for saving grace. And now I ask God that you would come into my life. Fill my life, oh God. Come in by the power of your Holy Spirit. I thank you for salvation. I thank you for forgiveness. And I accept your son, Jesus Christ, as Lord and Savior. And God, I pray that you would continue to help me to live in a way that I can have continued access to your presence. Father, I thank you. I bless you. I honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. Maybe you're here and you prayed that prayer, or maybe you're online and you prayed that prayer. I ask that you reach out to us at WesleyOnMain at Yahoo.com. That's WesleyOnMain at Yahoo.com. To let us know that you've accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. We want to walk with you. We want to work with you to help you grow, not only in your relationship, but help you to grow in the kingdom of God. So if you prayed that prayer, just drop us a note at WesleyOnMain at Yahoo.com to let us know you've accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Until next time, God bless.